Well, when it comes to getting a successful crop established, seed treatments play a vital role. And when you're talking about putting some wheat in in the fall, Brian, why would you not want to do that? I don't understand it. Well, I was just thinking here this morning, I'm a little chilly and that just reminds me that, uh, you know, that wheat seeding is coming up soon. And when you have soils that are starting to get a little bit colder, but we still have some moisture in the ground, it's just ripe for getting disease in wheat. And one of the most important steps is putting a seed treatment on. But unfortunately, what we find with a lot of wheat farmers around the country is there is no seed seed treatment applied to that wheat. And I just think that's unfortunate. If you want to get higher yields on your farm, whether you're in a drier area of the country or a wetter area, we just don't know for sure what's going to happen after we put that seed in the ground. And with the price of wheat that we have today, I guess we just strongly recommend that you take a look at whatever you could do for a seed treatment to improve your wheat. And we're going to talk about your different options today. Well, when you think about wheat, look at what kind of profit potential you have per acre right now. Now, if we had $2 wheat and you were getting 20 bushels, I'd say, wow, you know, you've got $40 <laughs> gross profit potential. Yeah, it's probably not worth spending a couple, two, three, four dollars on seed treatment. But you know, when you've got 50 bushel potential, 100 bushel potential at $8 or more, wow, that's a lot of dollars you've got to protect. And you can do that relatively inexpensively with the wheat seed treatment. Even the complete seed treatments really don't cost that much money. Well, here's the way I always look at it. And, and you use the word spend. And I just cannot stand when people talk about expenses on the farm and trying to cut expenses on the farm, unless you're talking about fuel or something like that, a true expense. Whenever you look at a herbicide, a fungicide, an insecticide, seed, any of those types of things, those aren't expenses. Those are investments. And you have to look at over time, will this investment pay me a good return? If it won't, then by all means, don't do it. But all we're getting at today is on average, seed treatments do pay a pretty good return on investment, especially when the wheat price is what it is today. So to begin with, we're gonna talk about a product or a product category that's a little bit different than what you might normally think about. Uh, we'll get to fungicides and insecticides here in just a little bit, but to begin with, we wanted to talk about biological products. Well, when it comes to biological products, I know exactly what my dad was thinking just a few years ago because he'd say, guys, that's foo-foo dust. That, that's garbage. They, they don't know what they're talking about. And you know what? 20 years ago, the science just wasn't there. They did not understand. I mean, you look even at something that's fairly established, like in soybeans, using rhizobia bacteria as inoculant to get more nodules on the roots. They knew that there was some bacteria in the jug, but they really didn't know exactly which rhizobia were in the jug. Mm -hmm. So the science really wasn't very good. Today, science is tremendous. And some of the things that are being done are really cool. Like with quick roots, for example, it's a biological product that we've used now for about eight years on our farm. We use it on everything, corn, soybeans, wheat, because we've done side-by-sides and we found we we're always getting better wheat better corn, better soybeans. On average across our farm, it's a significant return on investment for us. Now you think about, okay, well, what is this stuff then? It's a beneficial bacteria plus a beneficial fungi. And both of the strains that are being used have been proven in university research to be beneficial to the plant. They've just never been combined before. And it's interesting because many of these fungi that we're talking about controlling with the different products that we're putting on seed treatment, you think, wow, that's a bad thing. Well, not necessarily. This particular fungi in quick roots is a good thing, and it's actually safe to use with these fungicides. It won't kill the quick roots off. Now, there are a lot of other biological products out there too, and what we would encourage you to do is try some different things on your farm. That's how we ended up using quick roots like we are. We're not saying this is the best product in the world or anything like that, or you should absolutely use this. All we're saying is try some biological products. There is a lot of science behind that now. And as Darren and I travel around the world to a lot of these great farmers raising tremendous crops, not just corn, soybeans, or wheat, but specialty crops too, a lot of these farmers, they're using biological products. And it might be something other than quick roots. We just want you to try some stuff out on your farm, do side-by-sides, and also, one other comment that Darren made there that I'm going to disagree with just a little bit is that we always get more yield. We on don't, a, on average, uh, we right? Do. On, on average, average, we do, but not always. There isn't anything that you can do in agriculture that every single time is going to give you a return on investment. But what you have to look at is, okay, if I do this five years in a row, on average, how is my return on investment going to be? Well, one of the other things, Brian, that seems to be relatively new is insecticide in the seed treatments. Now, you say, well, wait a minute, I can spray post-emerge insecticides pretty cheap, and yes, you certainly can, but those aren't going to help you with those insects that attack your seed. 
For example, wireworms. Wireworms seem to be one of the bigger problems in wheat and in some areas, wow, they can be pretty substantial where they can take a good portion of your plant stand in the fall and all of a sudden you say, man, I must have had some winter kill or I had some problems. No, you didn't. You had bugs that ate the seed or chewed it off right as it was starting to sprout. And wireworms are normally the main culprit. So what you can do is put something like a cruiser, a poncho, or a gaucho right on your seed. And many of the treatments now come with an insecticide out of this neonicotinoid family right in the product. Now the other thing that's happening in the industry is they're playing with the rates of those insecticides. Now a lower rate of the insecticide does a nice job on some bugs, but in the heavy wireworm pressure areas, for just another dollar or two, you can add in some more insecticide and do an even better job. Well, it's not just for wireworms, it's for other bugs too, because all these insecticides have residual and they're systemic in the plant. So if you get a higher rate of gaucho, cruiser, poncho in that seed, then you're going to have better resistance later on or better control later on, I should say, for things like hessian fly, for example. And there are a number of other insects too, even grasshoppers. So take a look at whatever rate you're considering and what the cost difference is to go from the low rate to the high rate, and maybe it's worth it on your farm. Hey, one other bug to mention too, Brian, is aphids. This year we saw some aphids in our state in South Dakota, and I know around different wheat growing areas that were actually carrying disease. And when you've got aphids out there super early in the year, they're tiny little bugs, and you can't get out there when the very first one is out. There's gonna be a bunch out there before you get out to spray. And when you end up with something like barley yellow dwarf getting spread through your crop, it could take a substantial amount of yield. So you have to protect that seed if you want to stop those early aphids. The other big thing with insects is you got to remember that any time a bug feeds on a plant, it's going to open it up for disease. So if you can do a good job of insect control, then you're going to have a lot fewer disease problems in your plant. But speaking of disease, you probably also want to use a fungicide as well. We'll talk about those right now. Well, when it comes to fungicides, there have been fungicide seed treatments out there for years and years. Many of them now offer combinations where you're getting two or even three different fungicides in the same package. And now you've got different modes of action that helps fight disease resistance. And also, you're going to get some of those diseases that have been a little tougher to get with just one. There are a lot of different mixes depending on your area and depending on the diseases you're after. So we just encourage you to talk to an agronomist near you to find out which the best products are that fit the disease spectrum that you've got in your fields and just in general around your area. Well, once again, there are a lot of things that you can do with these seed treatments. We just encourage you to look at them as investments and consider the long term. Look at a three year or a five year average on your farm. We think it's a good idea to be treating seed if you're going after top yield. Certainly if you don't have much for yield potential and the price is really low, you know, maybe it's not that big a deal. But in just about all areas of the country, at least one of these three things, biological, insecticide, or fungicide, should really pay over the long term for you. Unfortunately, Brian, none of these seed treatments control weeds. We'll show you how to control this tough weed later in the show.